Hi, this is Tim Lotus with discussion board number two, where I'm going to discuss two uh, different topics. One is uh, the difference between liberty and freedom, and the other, I'm going to discuss two documents from medieval England, which one was the Magna Carta, 1215, very famous, and the other one less famous, but I argue was more profound, was the provisions uh, of Oxford signed in 1258. But to begin, liberty and freedom, I looked through the articles uh, assigned to us. I found one that, that gave two definitions of, of well, one definition of liberty, one definition of freedom. And it said, uh, liberty was described as the in, inverse of law, the space wherein action is unimpeded. And freedom as the ability to act and do without coercion. Now these sound very similar, so I decided to look a little deeper into the words, and I uh, found that the that freedom is an Anglo-Saxon term that combines the words freya, which meant free, and dom, which meant to do or put, while libertas is a Latin word meaning free. And I looked in several dictionaries to find to see if I can get a, uh, two different answers for each word. Uh, most of them. That I looked at had the same, but I found one from uh, one of my older dictionaries from 1933, and it describes freedom as the state of being free, enabling facility of action, ease, and manners. Sort of a dynamic, uh, positive word, and liberty as the state of being free from control of others. So sort of a negative word, meaning there's nothing to stop you. And I think that's a, a, could be a good big difference between the two words. Uh, freedom coming from the Anglo-Saxons, which uh, I'm now completely an expert on British history, but I know a good deal. And uh, as far as of my readings, uh, the Anglo-Saxons did not have written laws before the Norman invasion of 1066. It was simply passed down orally. Uh, their society was based on um, kinship and a sense of duty, and that sort of fits the definition of freedom, as they were free to you know, act as they were within a certain uh, code of behavior that wasn't written. And uh, now I'm going to go on to the two documents of medieval Britain. Uh, Magna Carta, of course, was more famous, 1215. It was signed, and it was a list of things that the king could not do, that the local barons told the king that he was no longer able to do, and it had mostly to do with tax, taxes and uh, imprisonment and uh, common law. And uh, what made it so profound was it said pretty much that the king's word is not law, that law is an independent power from the king and one that he is also subject to. And that was a really transformative uh, concept. It was actually annulled by the Pope, but then it was reissued uh, after John's death and uh, Henry III became king. Which brings to the provision of, provisions of Oxford, which was signed when Henry III was king. Uh, it's a pretty interesting story. Uh, barons, uh, several powerful barons led by Simon de Montfort, uh, came armed to the king and told him that he was going to meet them at Oxford and sign this document saying uh, certain laws that are, are they're going to follow from now on. There was no debate about the matter. They pretty much strong-armed the king into signing a document, uh, telling them what they could do. As Some of the big things were um, there was going to be three, at least three parliaments every year and that each county was going to be assigned four knights who'd uh, enforce the law and hear complaints, and that these knights were going to be assigned by the barons who controlled that area. And so it was a pretty radical document. It pretty much took all the power away from the king. Um, of course, the king was not happy about this, and there was a some battles fought over it. Uh, the first battle king was actually de defeated pretty bad, and Simon de Montfort pretty much uh, 
led a parliament that was in control of the country. And it was interesting because he allowed uh, burgesses and knights and, you know, who levels of uh, society that were previously not allowed into parliament. And they were discussing how to take even more power away from the king. But then the king escaped and uh, there was another battle. And this time parliament was defeated. Simon de Montfort was brutally killed. And uh, eventually Edward I took power, uh, who was very uh, tyrannical and forceful king. He did not follow the provisions of Oxford, and they just kind of got lost to history, I suppose. Uh, so you have two very interesting documents, which sort of fit the discussion of liberty and freedom. You have the Magna Carta, which was kind of a, a negative, this is what you cannot do to the king. And... Uh, a more dynamic provisions of Oxford, which says this is what is going to be going to happen from now on, and uh, it's an interesting contrast to discuss. And uh, and in the video there, thanks for listening.